All right. So we're taping kind of like a special episode mm. where we're hijacking all the episodes that we've taped before with guests to give everyone a little update on the life of Momentum and where it's yeah. going. This is the last podcast we'll tape in LA. So we are moving. This is going to be an extremely emotional episode for the both of us. Mm -hmm. So we apologize in advance. Yes, fast. <laughs> so we've lived in LA, gosh, seven, over seven mm -hmm. years. And we truly thought LA would be like our forever home. But within the past like two years from the pandemic and just everything going on, the city has changed dramatically. And before what we're going to tell you happened, we were already thinking about leaving. So we do want to mm -hmm. preface that we had been talking about just going somewhere different. But the events that have happened, I'd say within the last two months, really redirected us. And if there's anything that I've taken away from these last two months is that really don't have a plan in life because yeah. it's going to shoot you in a different direction. Like whatever your soul's path is and it's true evolution that it needs to go on, that's the direction. Mm -hmm. And if you're 10 degrees to the left, it doesn't matter. You're still going on that soul's journey. And I feel like this is definitely something that is going to be for our highest and greatest good for the both of us. But to give a little bit of background, about, about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, probably at this point when the podcast releases, yeah. my mother called me to tell me that she had lung cancer. She has lung cancer. And they caught it early. So we're very optimistic and hopeful it is just stage one, but it is a mass that's located in the upper left ventricle of her lung. She had had a CAT scan done. They biopsied it because they saw a mass and it came back as 99% malignant. And when she told me it, I think the day she told me it was like during, it was an evening. Mm -hmm. I was just, I kind of was numb to it. I was like in shock. I didn't really like process it. And we had, a trip coming to the East Coast for your cousin's wedding the following week. And she was debating whether or not to tell me or tell me in person. Mm -hmm. But when we were going to be there, she had a series of tests that she needed to get done to make sure that the cancer didn't spread anywhere, making sure like all her blood cells were correct, making sure that she was okay um, for whatever avenue she went, whether that be chemo or surgery and whatnot. So she had told me a week before we were getting to the East Coast for a trip. So at the time going there, I was so grateful that we could go and be with her and see kind of how she was feeling, what was going on, basically scoping out the scenario. At that time, no one knew what was going on. We didn't share it with anyone because we wanted to get more information before we began telling friends, family, and things like that. So when we were there, she was in really good spirits. Right? Like you'd yeah, say, like, I thought so. Like, yeah, she kept saying, I've received the best news that I could get because of out of all of the doctor's visits and the specialists that she saw, all of the options that were presented to her, meaning like chemo, radiation, surgery, she's elected to have surgery, which means that she'll be removing the entire portion of the lung where the mass, the cancerous yeah. mass is which in and of itself is a major surgery. Yes. Like this is a, a huge bodily organ that you're going to be losing. A, a very important one. Yes. You lose a lot of lung function. And it's very invasive. Yes. Surgery, like to open up and get in there. And it's a lot to it. Yeah. So the surgeon explained that to her and she, he explained like you're gonna be diminished with mm -hmm. your breathing capacity. It's gonna feel like you can't breathe for a while. And, you know, just again, the best case scenario that it could be at yeah. this point. Rather than like a long drawn out bout of chemotherapy. Yes, exactly. Destroying the rest of her body as well. 
Yes. You focus on the lung. Yeah. And so when that was happening, we were in Massachusetts, in Worcester, which is where my family is from. She was going through a series of tests within the week that we were there. We were in and out of seeing your parents, mm -hmm. going to Connecticut for the wedding. So as she was getting tests done and the results coming back, everything looked good. Like she was strong enough for surgery. However, something did come up on her PET scan. So there's a difference. Like the CAT scan is what picked up the cancerous mass. And that was just basically from your head to your lungs, I think. But a PET scan is your entire body because they wanted to make sure that the cancer didn't spread anywhere else. It didn't spread anywhere else. However, on the PET scan, they discovered she has a staghorn kidney stone. And a staghorn kidney stone is not a typical kidney stone where it's round and it can be passed naturally. It's basically developed. I don't know how long, but long enough where it grew like tentacles. That's where it gets like its antlers. name. Antlers, horns. So it can't be passed naturally. It has to be surgically removed. And my mother had been fighting a UTI for months. It wasn't going away. The prescriptions that the doctor had given her wasn't working. But we found out that the reason why it wasn't working was because of this staghorn kidney stone. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is going, mm -hmm. the trajectory of the timeline is going to make sense. So we found that out when we got back to LA after leaving my mother and when we had left, Dan and I, we basically left it as like, I'll come back for the surgery. Mm -hmm. She, it, you know, it's going to be an extensive recovery, but I'll just, you know, come back for a month, spend the time in Worcester with her, helping her recoup, getting her back on her feet. And that was really how we ended it. I left her being like, all right, I'll be back in like a couple weeks when we've got the surgery date for the lung, you know, the cancerous. Uh, mass on your lung to be removed and we'll go from there and then as soon as we got back to LA I just had a pit in my stomach mm -hmm. I couldn't be here knowing that she has cancer and yes it's the best case scenario we're, we're hoping that it's the best case scenario obviously and they're just it, it was almost like my higher self my soul was telling me you need to go home you this this is gonna be more intense than you think it was like, you you need yeah. you need to go home. And I'm saying home, like I know LA is my mm -hmm. home, but I'm saying like my childhood home, like this is where I grew up. I'm an only child. A lot of my family is in Massachusetts, but unfortunately not very close to my mother anymore. They're about like an hour and a half, two hours away. So I just, I felt this immense calling to help her. Like she's helped me my whole life. You know, my stepdad is amazing and he's really active. He loves to, golf and do yard work, but he is getting older. He's in his seventies. And it's like, after researching how extensive this surgery is going to yeah. be, it was just, I, I had, that's, I, I brought, I broached the idea to you. Like, what if, mm -hmm. we, what if we move back? Yeah, that was a very good, uh, good description of everything. Um, I was, I'll say first, before I get into that, uh, conversation I do sometimes like kind of think it's wild the way that like like the doctor surgeon the surgeon really really confident and just like oh yeah we're just gonna go in there we're gonna cut it out everything's gonna be fine yeah and you get kind of like oh like this idea like oh that's gonna be really easy and that's not that bad at all it's just like kind of in and out a few days in the hospital and then yeah as we, the more we looked into it and talked about it and thought about it and it's like this is this is an intense thing this is really really invasive this is gonna be a long painful recovery that you have to be on top of, you yeah. have to do the work, you have to take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, which, is, we'll get, which we'll get back to. Yeah, so you brought it up that you were, you thought that it would be a good idea to go back. And it's kind of ironic because, like you said before, we always thought LA would be like our forever home. And when we moved here, once we got to California, we kind of talked a lot about like, kind of like, I just wish we had lived more places before yes. we got here especially like before we got to LA, like we went to go into San Francisco was like kind of a surprise. And it was like, oh, this is amazing. Then we got to LA and it was like, well, here we are. Like, this is where we always wanted to live. This is where we're going to be forever, Southern California. But kind of wish we had had the opportunity to go other places. 
But also the other thing I would say is like the one thing I know is I will never go back to Massachusetts. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. like, it's like oh, yeah. and, and probably said it too much. Probably and, said it too many friends, times. Right? Like, everybody would always ask, like, never. You guys go back here. No, absolutely not. I will not go back. I will not go back. I will not go back. So and, just some advice for our listeners. Never say never yes. because the universe and your soul is really running the show here yeah. and not your limited ego yeah. self. And, yeah, you and that so. is the biggest lesson yes. I'm taking from So that. yeah, so I mean, you, you think you have things figured out, so you so you approached me with saying the one place that I, of all, everywhere in the world, the one place I don't want to move to, will you, can we go back to Massachusetts? And it was, it was just, just, just hearing the question was hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's why I feel so, I'm so grateful that we're in this partnership and that you are an extension of me because I do feel like this is happening for me. For mm-hmm. sure, I know that it is, but you're also an extension for me, so we have to broach it as just a learning experience for the both yeah. of us. And I, th- I have no doubt that this is the right thing to do, and it's going to be a great opportunity for us. But at the same time, it's like it is a, it's a jarring life move. Um, it, like today, we've been packing up packing up our apartment that we've been in. That this is the longest I've ever lived in a single place. In yeah, LA, which is crazy. Which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. And just like, I don't know. <clears throat> so we had mentioned before that we had been talking about leaving LA. I had no idea how hard it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially the last couple of days. And this has been really, really challenging. Saying goodbye to people. Just like saying goodbye to the city. Yeah. We sold our car this morning. Yeah. And it's like literally like a 2007 yeah. Like yeah. It wasn't like we're getting rid of this, this really nice car. <clears throat> Like, like, I can't believe like how emotional it was to like see see some guy drive off in my car. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But yeah, this has been like insanely challenging and painful. But it's like it's a step I know we have to take. And not even like not even a step like out of like obligation to your mother or something like that. I mean just for ourselves personally and like our soul's journey. Yeah. It's something that we need to go through. We need to sort of cut the ties. We need to like our identity can't be can't be tied to LA at all. So it is just like it's such a release. It's a, a release that's happening that I know is important in like just and dropping another attachment. It's it's challenging. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, the kind of the decision I made is like what, whatever you want to do, of course. Like, yeah. It was hard. Just being here alone while you were there, and I knew yeah. you were going through yeah. a challenging time, so yeah. that was really hard for me to be away from you. So it's like we talked a little bit about maybe like going back and forth and trying to keep our apartment here, and yeah. it's just sort of <clears throat> so necessary. So we decided, you know, it's going to be uh, rip the bandaid off. Let's just go. Yeah, it's we'll pack up and we'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly. And like we said, it's not going to be forever. We we're. Like everybody, everybody that we've told so far, like, oh, well, after that, where are you going to go? I have no yeah. effing idea. And I'm not even going to try to think about mm-hmm. where we're going. Because like I said, if they're like a wrench was thrown into our lives, like yeah. never in a million years, I think that any of this that's happening was going to happen. So like to even think about whether, like, I don't even know if we'll live in the country. I yeah, really don't. Exactly. I, mean, I think so. It's just like, I'm, I have no idea. Don't ask yeah, us. We yeah. We know where we're going to go. The one thing we've learned is not to make plans. Exactly. So we're going to yes. take it in stride and figure it out. But I think sort of the main thing is like, if we're going to be health coaches, yes. This what's is the really point if we can't go right now and make a difference in your mother's life? Yeah. And I think we can. I think we can make a huge impact there. And I yeah. think that we have kind yeah. of a unique knowledge and skill set on yeah. health and wellness. Yes. So to yes, yeah, so this is a huge reason why like this is a really emotional podcast and a very vulnerable podcast for us, but it's because we are going to document everything that we can from the road trip driving across the country, then the second like we get to Massachusetts and literally transform my mother's life mm-hmm. because she's like yeah. she's healthy, but we need her to be on point like everything has to be perfect and it's our job to teach her what she does with that is up to her Mm -hmm. but it's our job as health coaches and i do want to just back up a minute before we kind of close because other things obviously have happened in between that so we decided we were moving probably about a month ago 
I had mentioned earlier in the podcast that my mother has the staghorn kidney stone, which she needed to get operated on. So that surgery date was set for June 15th. So it was almost like kind of like a blessing in disguise that she needed to have it surgically removed because it just gave us more time to pack up our lives in California to sell the car, to hire movers, like to get boxes. Like it was like, okay, that's, that's think like, I know she wants the cancer out of her as soon as possible and to go under anesthesia twice within almost three weeks is rough on your body but like this is what needs to happen the lung surgeon did not want to operate with an infection Mm -hmm. of a uti and the staghorn kidney stone in there so they made the decision they're going to take that out and it was like okay great like gives us a little bit of time for breathing start we i we literally started packing we got all the movers and everything ready we got movers and stuff ready basically like the first weekend in june and then another freaking catastrophic life mm-hmm. event it was monday june 6th i remember my mother called me on her way to my stepbrother's apartment who also lives in worcester asking me to check facebook to see if he had posted anything in the last couple days because no one had heard from him and he didn't go into work and I was just like, oh shit, okay. Like checked Facebook, he hadn't posted anything in four days. My mother said that she was on her way with my stepfather to my stepbrother's apartment to check on him. And I said, okay, keep, keep me posted and let, let me know if he's there. Cause he wasn't answering his phone. Like no, no calls, no texts, no emails. Probably like an hour and 15 minutes later, I hadn't heard from her. And there was just a pit in my stomach. We had like made dinner and I, I told you I was like, force feeding myself and finally after like not hearing from her for an hour and over an hour i text her and said what's going on is he all right is he in his apartment and she called me and i I literally blacked out you told me the story after Mm -hmm. i literally i literally blacked out because she said he's in there but he's dead and i was just like what is happening like how is this happening like like I understand the cancer thing and that it's like for like my mother as much as me like learning and growing but holy shit like Mm. for him to die he had just turned 48 like just turned 48 and I just like I remember collapsing on the floor and like just being hysterical I like blacked out I don't even remember I was like oh my god like oh my god after everything that's going on with my mother and this and it was just like it also reassured that like moving to Massachusetts is 100% the mm-hmm. right, like the right move right now to be there. Not only for my mother, my stepfather, like my step, my stepfather is my father. He's just not my biological father. Him and my mother were, have been together since I was like two or three. They got married when I was four. So, I mean, I've grown up with him, my brother and my brother, um, lived with us for like many years. Like we don't, we, st- I do not want to lie. We certainly did not have like, a, like a true sibling relationship but like of course i knew him for 30 30 years and like just of course he's my brother um so i literally i i dropped everything and got on the next plane ride to obviously go to massachusetts to be with my family and for the services so i was there but when i booked the ticket there it was also a week before my mother's kidney stone operation. So, well, I'm not going to come back Mm -hmm. to LA and leave her to have that. So I'll just book a one way and then figure out when I'm coming back. So to make this short, because it it can get very long, we had the services for my brother. And literally two days later, my mother went in for the kidney stone surgery and it it did not go as well as we had hoped. Like it did in the sense where the surgeon got most of it. There's it's, it's again, if, it's really, it's not a typical kidney stone and it was taking up more than 30% mm. of her kidney. So like, just realize like, this is again, just as Dan and I are health coaches, like it's us realizing like signals from the body. Like this is, we've got stuff that we need to work on and implement with her. 
So he unfortunately didn't get it all. There's stint still in in her, but it's okay. Like the surgeon said, it's not going to affect the lung, lung surgery date, which is scheduled for July 7th still at this moment. So it's just, she had complications after with, you know, fluid got in her lung and then her oxygen was mm. severely low. So she was really only supposed to be in the hospital one or two days recovering after the kidney stone. She was in five days, five days after, you know, and the kidney stone operation took over three hours. So it wasn't, it was much more invasive than anyone thought. Yeah. And I felt horrible because I had booked my flight back to LA and she was still in the hospital. I, it, it was heart wrenching leaving her. But as soon as I got back here, it, I reassured you, like, we have to be there. Yeah. Like, she, it was just like, oh my God, again, like it was the universe showing me how much I need to be present in this situation. Mm. So that's, yeah, that's kind of it. I feel like that's yeah. over the past two months or a month and a half, a shit ton has gone on. And I like, I feel like my world is upside down. All worlds is upside down. So much is changing. So much is happening. And it's like, just go full force forward. Like I know that my soul's guiding me. I know that my higher self is guiding me and that, that I'm just like stepping into my own. Like I know this is for my highest and greatest good. And I, I, I will say I'm privileged to have the opportunity to help my yes, mother yeah. and my yes. stepfather and my whole family at this mm. point. Like I'm, I'm, I'm at a much different place because if this had happened two years ago, I don't know if I'd have the strength to do what I'm going to do now. Yeah, and it's exactly. just like, I, yeah. every, right, right, the the master, um, the teacher, the teacher appears, appears yeah. when the student is ready and yeah. we're ready. Yeah, and I, I do want to talk a little bit about just like disease in general sure. and what what we're talking about. Because like, obviously we're not surgeons and we're no. not, like, I'm not going to go, we're not going back to help like remove the cancer. Like there's, if people might be wondering like, well, what do you guys like think you're going to do? And I, I think it's like really important to recognize that the body doesn't make mistakes. No that all these things, like these aren't coincidences. There's, it's not a coincidence that there was a kidney stone, then a UTI, then the cancer. Complications are gonna be a part of that because yeah. like you can't just cut open your body and expect everything to be great. There's a lot of, when things are going wrong, when like lifestyle isn't right, when you're doing things, you know, like, you know, just making poor diet choices. Yes, and exactly. Stress. stress. She's the most uh, yeah, stressful. Yeah, I want to say stress for she sure. Stresses she, and her anxiety is off the charts. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. It's she, yes. Yeah. She's, and like yes. those emotions have to go somewhere or manifest in some way, and you can't just keep repressing emotions and you know negativity and stress and anxiety. You can't keep eating poorly. You can't keep not sleeping. Yes. You can't like all these things add up. And this yes. is why we do what we do because we're really, really passionate about trying to bring awareness to the idea that like your body, your natural state in your body is health and like to, to thrive and to be awesome. And when we kind of get in our own way, when we don't give our body the time to heal itself, things are going to add up and add up. And this is not a moral thing. Like I don't, I think this is also a really important point to make. Like it just is what it is. It just, the, like the body doesn't care. The, it, the body wants to be healthy and it's going to do what it needs to do. So like cancer is also, it's a healing mechanism in your body. And it is a way of your body to get your attention yes. and to trap it's a hit. I mean, yeah. it's a wake up call beyond. Yeah, wake this up is call. like if it what if there wasn't a tumor, it would just be cancer spread all over the body. So the body is trying to save itself by secluding an area and keeping it where it is, so that it's not everywhere in the body, and then it can kind of seal it off. Unfortunately, if you don't listen to the first signal, and then you don't listen to the second signal, and eventually the signal gets louder and louder and louder. And then it becomes, you know, cancer or, or heart disease or something really, really serious that needs to be dealt with. So kind of a, the plan is like, obviously, like the surgeon is going to deal with getting yes. rid of the cancer. She'll have a long recoup, like yes. weeks, if not a month to recoup where she really can't do anything yeah. other than sit. He said he, she can walk, light walk for 10 minutes each day, only for like for two weeks. But basically, like she has yeah. to like sit and sit up, sit, sit up, yeah, sit up and like heal, heal, heal the wounds, heal, let let the body recover, 
to the point that you can start building it back and exactly. building it strength. And our goal is to get her healthier than she's ever been before. Yes. And it's by by implementing a lifestyle that supports her health. Yes. That allows her body to heal itself. And yeah, to and that's that's mindset. That's yes. that's you know working on breathing. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be breath work is gonna breath be is gonna really be important because she's gonna be operating with only 75% of lungs. So it's gonna be, can we build that 75% up through intentional breath work where she doesn't notice that the other 25% of her lung is gone. So I think it's all really, really possible. I'm very, very confident that, you know, six months from now, she's going to be in the best shape of her life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just want, I just kind of think it's important that people yes, know that absolutely. and that we're not, there is like, none of this is like about blame or fault or no. anything like that. The past is the past. We can't yeah. change it. It's just, yeah, exactly. It's like from this moment on, how do we make the best choices and create a lifestyle that's going to support health? And that's, I'm, I'm excited about that part yes. of the journey. And the and that's why that's kind of what we we're saying before, but like, it's an opportunity. It's a great opportunity, you know, especially for you to be with your mother, just in general. Like we've been away for a long time. So mm-hmm. it's cool. Like we are going to get to be around family and friends more often yes. than people we grew up with. Yes. So that's a great opportunity. But then also from a, like coaching and learning standpoint yeah this is like we're getting thrown into it yeah like can't like this is no joke mm-hmm. we haven't worked with a cancer patient yeah. this is yeah and this a is stubborn legit. one yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah stay tuned everybody we are literally going to document this as much as we can i've spoken to my mother about it she's like very on board like she knows that that this is an opportunity for us exactly so so stay Stay tuned as yeah. we build momentum. Right, and I do want to encourage people to ask questions too. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, if, you guys, if you're listening to this and you're like, that doesn't make sense or whatever, like, ask us. Reach out. You can find us on, on Instagram. You can find us on MomentumStrengthWellness.com. Yep, everywhere. Yeah.